In Mongolia, uh, when the women in, with disabilities um, uh, don't know where to go uh, and where to go to the toilet and how to uh, handle, for example, sexual health issue and how to handle uh, their own uh, many, many uh, intimate, intimate issues, uh, there was no instruction and nobody could tell anything to these women. Nobody can give this kind of advices before. Suddenly we had the tool that tell, tells all kinds of stories on all kinds of tools to uh, most helpless women who want to keep their integrity uh, while keeping their health. So that book, when I saw it first, I just fell in love with that you book. Just, the book. Just, just fell, I just fell in love with that book. And I brought it to a Mongolian uh, community uh, led by uh, people on wheelchair and that wheelchair society of Mongolia, they just said, we want to translate this book for our members. So when I was in parliament, I uh, financed the book from the budget I, I could de delegate and the book was translated. And after the book was translated, I visited the center, uh, to Women Who the Center, which is a wheelchair community center. And after the book was out, the ladies were sitting there having just a good meeting and time. And they said, we learned so much from that book. And nobody told us this before. My mothers wouldn't tell us, doctors wouldn't tell us, friends wouldn't tell us, but that book told us everything. So. So we, uh, we were very happy to see that happy, empowered face of eyes, sparkling eyes of women in wheelchairs. So you think maybe mothers didn't tell them and doctors didn't tell them because this topic was so forbidden that no one even really knew it except until women with disabilities came out in your culture? The topic uh, about the health and uh, just the full fulfillment of life of disabled women were so ignored that their mothers wouldn't care and doctors wouldn't care to tell. And even society, in, in journalism, nobody was telling these issues to uh, these ladies. I think they were uh, just, uh, they were closed, they closed their doors to life. So as soon as ladies started reading this book, they felt really empowered and I, I think this is a marvelous thing that book can do to young women and uh, all the disabled community of Mongolia. A health handbook for women with disabilities was and is still a very unique and wonderful tool for our women and it really empowered our women with disabilities in Mongolia. Also when I was par in parliament I happened to lead um, a new law uh, happened to lead a working group of a law on the rights of uh, human on law on human rights with disabilities. So if I didn't read the handbook uh, for women with disabilities, maybe I would have made very bad law. But luckily, when I was in Parliament, not only I read that book, but also I helped get this book out in Mongolian language. My working group managed to compile a law within two weeks and got it passed by parliament within three weeks. And everybody was shocked how the whole working group team in parliament managed to pass this law so fast when this law itself was sitting on parliamentary agenda for nine years before and throughout nine years, nobody could pass that law. But it turned out the simple things that parliament members needed to know were not explained before. Nobody explained it before. Nobody urged members of parliament to pass that law before because nobody knew how important these issues were. But the health handbook for women with disabilities actually was an eye-opening book for members of parliament when I pitched this law to, to them and we managed to, actually thanks to the influential women with disabilities in Mongolia and with this influential book, uh, uh, Health Handbook for Women with Disabilities, we actually managed to change culture in Mongolia, in Mongolian parliament, through this law.